So when it comes to anal sex down there, piche, oh, chi, gross. That don't Namaste everyone, this is Avanti and welcome back to episode 4 of the Taboo Talks. Today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit beyond and maybe even a little bit more taboo. We're going to be talking about period, sex and many other sexual taboos. When you think of sex, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Do you picture a man and a woman, people lying down, sitting up? When it comes to talking about these things, we often have a very heteronormative idea of what it looks like. Hamare man mein penis aur vagina jab milte hain, that is sex. But that is not true. Sex can be of various different types. Intimacy can be of various different types. And today we're going to explore a couple that you may have heard about, but you may have whispered about behind closed doors. When folks engage in any kind of sexual activity, regardless of the gender, regardless of the background, it's really, really, really important to be safe. If you want a proper episode about different types of contraceptives, please let us know in the comments below and we can try and bring that to you as well. When it comes to pleasure, it's important that people feel safe. And one of the things that adds to that safety is if you feel comfortable with the person, both your body feeling relaxed and all the areas are well moisturized or well lubricated. And one of the aids that can help you with that is something called lube or lubrication. Here's an example of one. So Serona's lube is water-based, which allows for it to pair really well with condoms and really well with many other forms of contraceptives. And it also does not disturb the pH balance of somebody's vagina, which is extremely, extremely important to make sure that you can use it again and again. But what I really like about this one in particular is it also helps with menstrual cups. So this menstrual... This menstrual cup has fallen on the floor, we cannot use it, but there are sterilizers, which you know if you've seen previous episodes. So to make sure that it's an easier experience, you can also pair it with this loop. Just attach a little bit at the rim and put it up and you should be totally good to go. Now that we've talked a little bit about the aspects of safety, one of them that we did not mention but is extremely, extremely important is consent. And the easiest thing to remember when it comes to consent, and this is across all areas of life, and particularly when it comes to sex, is fries. Firstly, it should be freely given. If somebody is feeling under pressure or coerced, or there's a power dynamic, or if somebody is under the influence of alcohol or anything of that nature, their consent is not being freely given, so it is not really consent. The R is that it's reversible. So just because I consent to one aspect of sex, let's say I consent to having oral sex today, that doesn't mean I'm necessarily consented to having anal sex or penetrative sex or anything else, even kissing or touching. So it is something that's constantly dynamic and can be reversed at any point. The I is that it's informed. Every person involved in any kind of act should be informed about exactly what they are consenting to. E means enthusiastic. So if somebody is giving you their consent, but they're like, ah, oh, okay, whatever you say, like it's fine. That is not enthusiastic consent. Enthusiastic consent is yes, I would like to, I want it. The S is specific. Is it okay if I kiss you? Are you okay with being hugged? Is it okay if we engage in X, Y, Z? Be very specific about the acts. Because just because somebody has consented to one thing once or in that moment doesn't mean they've consented to everything. And that applies for people who have been in long-term relationships, people who are married as well. It is important to gain consent about everything. And the reason I've gone into this whole passion about consent is because we're going to talk about something that we don't really talk about that much, and that is period sex. And period sex is engaging in any kind of sexual activity while on periods. So you might hear the word period sex and you might be like, oh, gee, gross. There's blood, there is many other fluids involved. It's not for everybody, but it is not something that is dirty or shameful. And it's something that is a part of an act for many people. And you just have to know and be informed about what all goes into it. So the first thing that one should know is that when somebody is on their period you are maybe slightly at a higher risk for contracting STIs so it is really really important that you should ideally wear contraception such as a condom or something that is a barrier method of contraception. Also wearing a condom during period sex helps because it just makes the act a little less messy if you will. You can also put a towel beneath so that there is not a mess being made on the surface. So especially after, after the act, your 
condom might be filled with different kinds of fluids at that point and it might be a little bit hard to dispose. So luckily there are tools for that, such as a condom disposal bag, one of these. And what's cool about these is they're also environmentally friendly. So it feels discreet and you don't have to deal with all the fluids that come with something like period sex. One thing you might not know is that when somebody's on their periods, they get cramps, which we've talked about, and many people experience that. And actually, one of the ways you can relieve cramps is by having an orgasm. Um, so period sex is something that could actually be pleasurable and helpful in more ways than one. Again, it may not be for everybody. It may feel dirty to some people, but it's not shameful. And you can decide to do it on any aspect, any time during your period, whether you're a heavier flow, lighter flow, whatever it might be. Just because you're on your period, by the way, does not mean you cannot get pregnant. So please make sure you're being safe in that capacity. But you're probably like, okay, so how do I deal with the, uh, the mess? So one is, of course, disposal bags, but afterward it might be a little more messy than you're used to. So you can use wipes and regular wipes are created with often sanitizer and you do not want sanitizer anywhere in these regions of your body. And so something like this, for example, these are intimate wet wipes and they're pretty simple. They open up like regular ones. They look like regular wipes, so you can just carry them. So we've talked a little bit about period sex and we've talked about periods throughout this whole series, uh, but there are obviously other aspects that, or other parts of the body that one can engage in when engaging in intimacy. It's not just penis, vagina, mouth. Several people may have heard of the word anal sex in association with certain kinds of infections or diseases, particularly something like HIV or AIDS. And there's a lot of, lot of, lot of stigma about it. Research has shown that all sorts of people, all sorts of gender background sexualities actually engage in anal sex. And it is not at all shameful. It is not at all dangerous. Like any other kind of sex, anybody is at risk to certain infections. So it's important to protect yourself. So when it comes to anal sex, um, it is even, even, even more important to have lubrication because the muscles around there, around your rectum, are a little bit tighter often than your vagina. And so it is really, really important to make sure that you use a lot of lubrication if you decide to use it. You might be watching this and you're like, ew, why are you talking about this thing? It's gross, but it is natural and it is important also to name the parts of our body. We can't just say down there, piche, dungan. It is called a vagina, it is called an anus, it is called a clitoris. We have multiple holes. Also, it's not for everybody. Some people I know really like it, some people don't like it at all. So it's up to you to decide, but make sure you're informed about the possibilities that exist in that capacity. It is also totally okay whether you've been with your partner for years or whether it's a new partner and especially if it's a new partner to request people to get tested because we're just trying to keep people safe here and you know your safety suraksha is, is the most important thing. The other thing you know when we've talked about sex in all of these capacities we've talked about them that involve usually another human being or another partner but for any of these things. You can engage in self-pleasure as well. So if you, you understand your body, you will have a better relationship with it. You will be able to share in that experience with somebody else should you decide to have another partner and just take your pleasure into your own hands, quite literally. The thing is, there are also tools today that help with that, such as sex toys, whether that's a vibrator, a dildo, many, many others. Again, please, 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 please use lube to make sure that you are just being safe and making it a pleasurable experience for yourself. None of these things are dirty. They are taboo in our society because we don't talk about periods, let alone sex, let alone anything else. And as a result, we don't talk about consent. We don't talk about consequences. We don't talk about best practices. People are shamed when they're on their periods. They are made to feel shameful for using something as simple as a menstrual cup. So the more conversation there is about it, the better it is. And any of the videos in this series were helpful, please let us know in the comments below and please let us know what else you want to see because it really, really, really does help. And share things that you may not be able to talk about in your own homes, but hopefully something like this is helpful to you to learn something about. 